So we have finished all of our foundation pieces of coming up with these techniques of differentiation. So let me show you the actual techniques now. There are four of them in this section, and in the next couple of sections, we'll be learning some more techniques. But these are the ones that are really, um, in my mind, called the shortcuts, because these are the shorter, the four shortest techniques of differentiation. So. The first rule, the first shortcut that we're going to learn is the constant rule. So if we have the equation y equals c, where c is a constant, meaning it's just a number, then the derivative of our constant is going to be 0. And if we think about this, we have two explanations to give us why this is the case. The first one is let's just start with an example, like y is equal to 5. If I look at the graph of this, that is a horizontal line at 5. So I find where my y value is equal to 5, and then this is my equation y equals 5. Now remember, if I'm going to take the derivative of it, the derivative was going to give me slope. So if I want to talk about slope of a horizontal line where it's defined to be rise over run, I don't have any rise here. So my rise is considered to be zero units, and my run, you can consider it whatever you want it to be. Um, it doesn't really matter here, but it's always going to come up to be zero overall because my rise is zero. So that just enforces that if my original equation is a constant, then the derivative of that is going to be zero. Now, also, we saw this in one of our foundation videos. We saw this in the second foundation video. So let me reference it. So in this video, we found the derivative of y equals x squared. We found the derivative of y equals x squared plus 8. And we figured out the derivative of both of those, our dy dx of both of those equations, were equal to 2x even though one had the 8 added to it and the other one didn't. Then we talked about why that was the case, and beyond that, we found that the derivative of this one here, y equals x squared minus 2, that one was also just the derivative of 2x. And that's because all three of these have the exact same graph. They all are a parabola opening up. The only difference is this graph can be shifted up or down, but that has no implication upon what our slope is. So if I take this graph and I talk about the slope at this point right here, it doesn't matter if I shift this graph up a few units, my slope at the exact same point is going to be identical. And so if I shifted this guy up and down, it's obviously going to be the exact same graph, which is going to give me the exact same slope. So these constants added to my equations here, that's just the shift. And we saw that the derivative of those pieces had no effect on our graph. So that just reinforces that the derivative of any constant has no implication, so therefore the derivative is zero. All right, now that we know that material, we can find the derivative of these two things over here. Please pay attention to notation because that is just as important as the derivative concept in itself. So my first equation, y equals 32, obviously 32 is a constant. So the derivative, meaning dy dx, of 32 is going to be 0. In part b, here's one that always throws people for a loop. They see pi, and they get kind of in freak-out mode. No worries about that. Just note that pi is a number in itself. It's a very odd number, yes, but it is just a number. It is an approximation of 3.14, so on and so forth. So if I want to take the derivative of pi, I'm just taking the derivative of a constant or of a number. So the derivative of that is also just 0. And the notation that I'm going to use is f prime of x. So there is my derivative for part b. OK, let's move on to our second shortcut or our second differentiation technique. This one is called the power rule, and we saw this in our fourth foundation video. And basically, I gave you the rule in that video. We saw the pattern, and so we used it from there. 
if we have the equation y equals x to the nth, where our variable is x and n is our exponent, the derivative of that is, as we bring our exponent down, n, we multiply it by our variable, and we subtract 1 from our original exponent. I explained this in that, again, that fourth foundation video, so if you need to go back and reference it again, please do so. Okay, I have three examples here. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can come up with the derivative of those three examples on your own. Okay, the first one is just to make sure that you've got the feel for the process. Again, using the correct derivative notation, dy dx, my equation was x to the fifth. So if I want to take the derivative of it, I bring my exponent down, I keep my x, and I subtract 1 from my original exponent. So 5 minus 1 gave me 4. So there is the derivative of y equals x to the fifth. In part b, I have f of x is equal to x to the negative seventh. Now, this is still an exponent. It doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative, like in this example. I'm still going to use my rule or my shortcut the exact same way. So, the notation that I'm going to use is f prime of x. I bring my exponent down, so my negative 7 comes down. Keep my base of x and then I subtract 1. So my original exponent was negative 7. If I subtract 1 from it, then my new exponent gives me negative 8. So it kind of throws people for a loop right away because I have negative, but it follows the exact same pattern as just any other exponent that we may see. So there is the derivative of part b. Okay. In part C, we have g of t is t to the one-half power. may not look like a power, but it's supposed to be. And so, again, to take the derivative of it, we use the exact same differentiation technique that we talked about over here. And again, this is to show you that it doesn't matter whether our power is a whole number, a negative number, a fraction, or anything in between. It always follows the same pattern. So my g prime of t then is where I bring my power down. So my one-half power comes down. I keep my base variable t the same. And then I subtract 1 from my original exponent. So I have one-half. If I want to subtract 1, then I need to do a common denominator. That's the same thing as one-half minus 2 over 2, because 2 over 2 is the equivalent version of 1 but I have the same denominator. So I subtract my numerator, 1 minus 2 gives me negative 1, and keep my denominator. So my new exponent becomes negative 1 half. So there is the derivative and the notation of part C as well. This is where I'm going to end this video, and in the next video, I'm going to be covering the next two differentiation techniques or the next two derivative shortcuts.